This is the Garden of English. I'm Tim Freitas, and today we are going to talk about writing conclusions for our literary argument. So if you are sick of writing just summary conclusions, then you're going to want to check this out. We have been working through question three literary argument on the AP WIT exam. We've talked about thesis statements. We've talked, actually I should say, we've talked about breaking down the prompt and producing thesis statements. We've talked about body paragraphing. Now what we need to do is we need to talk about the conclusion. And truth be told, if you have been told that your conclusions are to just summarize your paper, that's really just nonsense. So we want to actually write conclusions that are going to be strong and meaningful and delicious that will really invigorate our reader. Uh, and the truth is, is that they don't have to actually be that long. But if you missed any of our prior videos, you're going to want to just click right up here in the corner and check those videos out. But without further ado, I'm going to shrink myself up like I normally do to our page. Please note that this document will indeed be included in the description down below. Uh, and here are some steps for writing a conclusion. Now, unfortunately, I can't give you templates for writing a conclusion, but I can give you steps for writing a conclusion. Um, I am going to just remind you all that there's a spoiler alert here. I'm using Of Mice and Men. Uh, as my book, and because of that, I will talk about what happens at the end. Uh, so if you, haven't read, if you haven't read Of Mice and Men and you plan on reading Of Mice and Men, then you might want to pause it here, read the book, it's super short, and then come back and finish the video. I don't know. Uh, but if you've watched all my other videos, you've already seen all the spoilers anyway, so life will indeed go on. Um, and the truth is, is that we still watch movies when we know what happens, and we sometimes even watch reruns of games when we know who wins. So we know in the end of the book, big deal. Anyway, here's the thesis that we uh, have been writing through for the body paragraphs of our paper. Um, it says, in the novella of Mice and Men, Steinbeck presents two mercy killings in order to showcase the deep care that the characters involved shared for one another, ultimately illustrating that companionship often requires immense sacrifice. Now, when we were talking about the body paragraphs and the topic sentences and how those influence the body paragraphs and providing the commentary and whatnot, I'd like to remind you that we use the first two parts of this thesis, right? Each body paragraph was going to deal with a different mercy killing. And then also in the body paragraph, we would talk about how that shows the care of the characters involved, like, you know, how much different characters cared for one another. Uh, but we did not actually ever really... Um, explicitly tie in the universal insight that we left on the end of our thesis that's right here. And the reason why is because when we write through our paper with these first two parts, we are intrinsically, um, rather than explicitly, so uh, we're implying, I guess, so implicitly we are addressing this kind of universal insight. But we also put this in our thesis because it reminds us of where we have to get to at the end. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just give you the two steps that really a strong conclusion is going to entail. Um, but the problem is that these two steps are kind of abstract. Well, the first one's pretty easy, but the second one's kind of abstract, and um, you have to practice it. But when you know that you've done it right, you will know. Trust me. So the first step that you have for writing a conclusion is this. You are going to take that universal insight from your initial thesis statement, and you are going to reword it. Now, many of you have probably been told in the past to kind of like reword your thesis. No, no, no. We're not doing the whole thesis here. We are doing the universal insight. In fact, you don't even need to mention John Steinbeck or any of the characters if you're writing of Mice and Men in the last conclusion paragraph. I encourage my students not to mention the author's name or the characters at all in the conclusion because conclusions are about ideas. This is showing that you understand the universal application of the literature you just wrote about. So, so that you don't get into summary mode, if you take out the literature, that would be the author's name, and if you take out the characters and whatnot, you can make sure that you are in universal mode. Now, you don't want to use the word you. Instead of, if you are tempted to use the word you, like that universal you, you want to actually just say people, individuals, or humanity. Okay, so there's a little tip right there. Um, but we're not going to summarize our whole thesis. We're going to reword the last part of our thesis. So that insight that was up top, we're going to reword that. So you'll notice once again that my insight was that companionship often requires immense sacrifice. Okay? So when we reword it, we call it a summary statement. Like I said, this whole conclusion won't be summary, but this part will. We're going to take it down. But the key point here is a reword. It does not say restate. It says reword. So one of the ways that you can do this, or that I've done it, is right here. 
I have inevitably love in any form, not just romantic, is founded upon pain. For love is nothing without the willingness of those in a relationship to sacrifice. So notice what I did here. I really looked at this idea of companionship and I turned that into love, okay? Because there are different types of love. I still have sacrifice here, but I also tied in pain. So notice how I'm starting to stretch my ideas here. Um, and I'm establishing some relationships. Uh, you want to do that. You want to reword, see if you can kind of say, oh, here's another idea that might relate to this idea that we can still use to focus in on. Uh, but notice how I introduced pain in here. You don't have to introduce a new universal idea here if you don't want to. It just worked out perfectly here for this. So this is my summary statement. And it basically says the same thing, that if you're a companion of somebody, you're going to be willing to sacrifice for that person. Uh, that's what this means. Uh, but sacrifice does indeed require pain. Notice that there's no mention of Steinbeck. There's no mention of characters. Once again, that's because this is universal. Now, if you're the type of person who's like, I don't want to just reword my thesis. Is there a better way to do it? Right? There is. You can do it with style. The easiest way to make your first sentence of your conclusion with style is to create a pertinent metaphor. So that means that the metaphor either relates to the work that you're reading um, and you could pull an image from the work that you're reading, like some sort of symbol, and turn that into the metaphor for the idea without actually um, you know, mentioning the author's name or whatnot. Or you can use just your own metaphor that isn't cliche, let's say. All right. So you'll notice that I have my summary statement here with style. This is where we have some sort of a metaphor. You can also personify things here too. So, and, and a personification is a type of metaphor anyway. You can actually learn about that in the video. Um, uh, that deals with um, literary annotations, but we'll worry about that at a different time. So anyway, look at my summary statement here uh, where we have it with style. It says, although immense sacrifice has the ability to physically tear apart the lives of those in a relationship, it also cements the reality of the bond that they share. So notice that these two things actually say the same thing, but I'm saying that sacrifice has the ability to tear things apart. I kind of personify the um, you know, personify the um, emotion there or the idea there. But then I also, I also talk about how sacrifice cements the reality of the bond that people share. So through sacrifice, this bond is really made extremely concrete. And notice how I use the word cement there to highlight how concrete that bond becomes. Because a bond is just abstract, but you know about that bond in reality when you sacrifice for somebody else. So that's just one of the ways that you can actually produce a summary statement with style. This will be the first sentence of your conclusion. Now, step two, and this is the hard part here, okay? This is when you connect your universal insight from the story that you've already written about to something greater, okay? So you need to say to yourself, okay, what other greater truth does this actually push us towards, okay? And the reason why we do this is because we are told in the prompt to contribute to an interpretation of the work as a whole. Well, in our essay, we've already written about how all of these events contribute to the work in the work. But when we talk about the whole, we are talking about universality. So now we're saying, how does this universal insight link to the whole of life for every person? So what we're going to do here in the simplest way of wording this is actually right here. You want to link the thematic insight that you just put in your first sentence to a greater universal truth. And the way that you do that is you think of what's another universal insight that stems from this one that I can then write into, okay? And in some way, it does indeed have to relate to the prompt. Now, you'll notice this is actually quite abstract, but when I was thinking about doing this, I was thinking about how, you know, if someone loves another person for sacrifice, it shows the um, that, that true love is when you don't value your own benefit, you value somebody else's more. Um, and then it's all about looking at the other person. And so I was like, how can I convey that? So here's what I actually wrote into here, right? I, ha I have my first sentence, which is going to be something along the lines of, although immense sacrifice has the ability to physically tear apart the lives of those in a relationship, it also cements the reality of the bond that they share, okay? I then now write into something more universal. I have the immense pain that's often tied to difficult relational decisions allows those that make them to reflect on the true value and worth of the other party. So notice that the shift here is looking at the worth of the other person. That's the universal truth I'm trying to get out here. Only when an individual understands their own esteem 
of another individual? Will he or she finally see that the authentic value of the relationship is not found in one's personal comfort, but rather in what he or she is willing to bear to provide comfort for another. And look at what happens here. The universal insight that I relate to the companionship and sacrifice that I then extend to is that you're not going to gain your own personal comfort in a relationship if that's what you're looking for. But if you look for the other person's personal comfort and you're willing to do whatever it takes for that, that will then allow you to understand how this relationship is beneficial to you. And this right here is a conclusion that, as I teach my kids, leaves a glass slipper. No one is going to get to get to the end of this paper about of mice and men and read this conclusion and read that last line with that new insight, like, wow, maybe relationships aren't about me, it's about the other person. And in knowing it's about the other person, that's what gives me joy. Someone's going to get there and be like, wow, this kid really understood how Of Mice and Men actually relates to real life. And that's what we're going for. And you could do this with any book. Now, if you want other further instruction about how to kind of write conclusions, I have a video about how to do this for question two in AP Lit, which is the prose analysis. You can access that once again up here. Okay. And uh, that does things just a little bit differently because there's an extra step, but you want to make sure in the end that your conclusion is entirely universal. It's not a summary and it extends to a greater universal idea. So it takes your initial one from your thesis, rewords it, and then extends to another universal application that's closely related to the prompt as well and leaves a glass slipper, right? You are like Cinderella. Your reader is Prince Charming. You've left that last moment and your reader is like, wow, I want to talk to this person more about the insights that they have about life. Now, if this video was helpful, I'm going to just ask, as always, that you like and subscribe so you don't miss any other Garden of English content that comes out. We're going to start shifting towards doing a poetry unit uh, very soon here, probably within the next two weeks. Uh, so we'll take care of all of this again with question one. We already have question two videos. You can follow the Garden of English on Instagram uh, just to stay up to date with what we're doing. Uh, you can also like us on Facebook as well. And we also sell a lot of merch. We sell some posters for classrooms. Um, and we also sell uh, some pretty awesome t-shirts that are designed by a former student of mine. Uh, so please consider supporting us in such a way. Um, but uh, if you also, well, I forgot to mention, if you have any questions because this is a rather kind of universal application and you're like, can you make it? a little bit easier to understand. Put your questions that you need clarified in the comments down below, and I'm happy to answer those, uh, potentially even with another video. So um, look forward to our new, co I'm looking forward to creating new content for question one, and we'll see that in a couple weeks. Have a great one.